Hey guys, Mr. B here again, bringing you another awesome math video. This one I'm going to talk a little bit about the slope formula. I've done a couple videos on the slope formula. I've never been happy with any of them. Don't think I'll be happy with this one anyway, but uh, I will give it a try nonetheless. Super, super important topic in your journey through mathematics, guys. Can't tell you how important this is. I, you know, I first teach slope in like grade 10. It's probably the first time. You know, it's officially called slope in the curriculum that I teach. But I just continuously do it in grade 11, grade 12. You use it in university. You use it in physics, in uh, so any science courses, graphs, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, there's a lot of real-life applications for this stuff in, in uh, you know, if you uh, follow a career of math, engineering, science, that kind of stuff. All right, so <clears throat> you've probably seen slope defined like this rise over the run. So all the rise is, is the distance up or down, and the run is the distance from side to side. That's all it is, right? So if you have a graph that's going up like this, a line, of course, you can get the distance up or down and the distance from side to side. And divide it, you get the slope. So another way to put this is the rise, if you look at a, you know, an x, y axis, the up or down is really the y, and the side to side is really the x. So what we're actually have here, the rise is really a fan, is a simple way of saying the change in y. So that change in y, that, that is called the delta right there, represents change. So change would be like, you know, if something grows, you know, it goes from 0 to 5, it changed 5 units. Or if it rose 4 units, that would be it changed 4 units. So then the change in x. So the rise of the run is change in y over the change in x. Delta y, excuse me, over delta x. So another way to put that is, remember change is basically subtracting two things, right? So if you have two things, there must be, this must be consistent of two things. I keep saying two things a lot, two things. Uh, so y2 minus y1. So the first y, or the second y point, subtract the first one. So that tells you how much you actually rose or rised up on the graph, and then x2 minus x1, so that where you first made your uh, or x to move to the right to all the way to a certain point, x2, and that distance is right there. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So why this formula is useful, and of course this is the infamous slope formula, so the slope formula. This is the infamous slope formula and is very, very useful for solving a lot of different things. So number one, you've probably used rise over run for graphs. You can now use this guy if you want to. Although I prefer rise over run for graphs, but this is useful if you have two points. So let me give you an example of where you might use this. So if you're given two points, so let me make up two points now. So let me see, five, ten. And let me see, 10, 30. So you get two points on a graph. So the first point, so this is point number one, and this is point number two. And we want to find the slope. So if we didn't know this formula, we'd probably have the graph the line and then make our little triangle and then count some blocks and things like that. But with this formula, we can use this guy. So what I like to do is I like to label my points. So doesn't matter which one you call the first point or second point, it really doesn't. So I'll call this one x1, y1, x2, y2. And that's totally arbitrary, guys. This could be y, x1, y1. As long as this one's like 2, 2, and this one's 1, 1, that's all we're looking for. So then I write my formula out. m is equal to y2 minus y1 all over x, x2 minus x1. Gah. I don't know why I did that. I was thinking about telling you guys about the mistake that I, one of my students made during a test, which was um, they wrote X over Y the entire time. So it's really important to not to do that, obviously, because you get every single slope wrong. So, um, and I almost did it. So my Y2 is 30. 
my y1 over here is 10. I'll divide it by my x2 is 10. My y x1 is 5. So I get 20 over 5, which is equal to 4. And there it is, guys. That's as simple as that. That's how the slope formula works. Given two points, you can find the slope. So let's do another example with some negatives involved. So let's say I had, I'm not going to, I tried to work that one out to be a decent number. I'm just going to make up some random numbers. This is negative 7 and 5 and negative 5 and negative 8. So what we need to do again is we need to think about which one's our first point. So I'll label differently this, guys, just, just so it doesn't, just shows you that there's really no difference. So I call this one x1, y1, this one x2, y2, just like that. So then I get my slope, y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Did not mess this one up. So then my y2 is 5. Subtract my y1, which is negative 8. So this is what I want you guys to be careful about. So where we have subtract in the slope formula, we have to be careful when we're subtracting a negative. That's actually adding, right? And then I have x2, negative 7 subtract 5. So negative 7 subtract negative 5, sorry. So x2 subtract x1, that's good. y2 subtract y1. So 5 subtract negative 8, that's actually going to be 12. No, 13, sorry. 13. And then negative 7 subtract negative 5, so that's the same as plus 5, so that's negative 2. So then I don't like to leave a negative on the bottom here, guys, so I'll just tack it on out front here. Negative 13 over 2. And that's my slope. So sometimes slopes are not a nice number, but that's just how it is. All right, guys. Hopefully this video helps you in your quest to... Uh, uh, don't ignore my hands. I was painting today. Uh, figure out slope and lines and things like that. I got lots of line uh, videos, so if you want to check those out, that'd be much appreciated. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in class.